if I'm being honest, anything after two shots for me with a shotgun, I'm just, I'm just angry. I'm just pulling the trigger. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I, I totally agree. <laughs> Especially when you're hunting, that third shot is yep. either a Hail Mary or a screw it. I'm just going to throw yep. another yep. one at him. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Ryan Gresham, and this, this is Gun Talk Nation. This Gun Talk Nation is brought to you by MGM Targets, Guns and Gear, Remington Ammunition, Primary Weapon Systems, Silencer Central, and RangeReadyStudios.com. All right, welcome into another edition of Gun Talk Nation where we talk about everything in the world to do with guns. Um, today on the show, a recurring guest on the show, show, Joel Hodgton, Remington Ammo. Welcome in, man. Thanks for having me back, Ryan. Always good to be here and uh, gun talk. So, uh, so Joel, what you been doing lately? You've been, are you been shooting any? Is there anything that's yeah. like ammo-wise that you've been playing with? You know, um, I just got back from the range yesterday, and uh, usually I'm tapping away on some emails and in some meetings on a Tuesday, but I was out um, shooting with some media folks, and we were shooting our new Buckhammer cartridge, which, you know, it's a it's a big 358 diameter, 200 grain bullet, mm -hmm. and we were just kind of laying it in on some steel like a couple hundred yards out, so it was... Nice. The trajectory was probably like a catapult, you know what I mean? It was kind of right. hard in there, but it was... Uh, it was still good, and you know, big enough bullet. You uh, you know, when you hit it, that's for sure. I mean that that round, you guys developed it, and it seems to be gaining some traction. And and with a new cartridge, you never know. Like, is it going to catch on? It's always a chicken egg thing. You totally. know, you develop this round, and then you need um, gun companies to kind of chamber it. Um, and then a lot of people haven't shot it yet, so. What's it like to shoot? Because this is not necessarily a high pressure round. It's not a Magnum. No, mm -mm. nope. I mean, I believe 360 buck hammer is at 50,000 PSI, um, which you think about buck hammer came from 3030. So we started off with a 3030 Winchester parent case mm -hmm. and basically just skipped the steps in our production process and our brass draw to get rid of the bottleneck. And to extend that brass case out to be, I believe, 1.8 inches, 1.7 inches, something like that. So, um, you know, it was a, it's a, it's a, it's a cool round, and um, it uses more modern propellants. So, 3030 came out 100 years ago, mm -hmm. pre smokeless powder, believe it or not. So now, using more modern propellants, modern gunpowder in Buckhammer, um, the pressure's up versus 3030, so we can we can kind of cook that thing a little bit faster. So it's um. It's fun to shoot. I think it's like, you know, looking at our numbers here at Remington, 360 buck hammer is maybe 15% more recoil than a 350 legend. Um, okay. But something like 25% less recoil, 30% less recoil than a 270 Winchester. So, okay. I mean, it, it to me, it feels like shooting a 3030. Um, Somewhere, yeah, it's, it's yeah. Maybe, maybe a good round. I mean, I know that the whole street wall thing, but maybe also a good round for newer shooters, youth shooters, maybe. Totally. I agree. And you think of, uh, you know, I, did you shoot a lever gun much growing up? Was that something you guys did? A didn't little leave? bit, but not a ton. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Same, same here. I mean, in Kansas where I grew up, of course you can use any cartridge you want for, for big game hunting. But, um, I grew up in kind of the Northeast part of the state. And so, uh, that part of Kansas is more like Missouri. I mean, it's, it's timbered, big rolling Hills. I think all the deer I ever shot growing up were, 250 yards or less across the cornfield, right. Or, yeah. or across the Creek or whatever. So, um, for me shooting a 30, 30, shooting the Weber gun, 360 buck hammer, it just kind of feels like deer season, you know, it's kind of nostalgic and fun little action. And, uh, you know, you feel like John Wayne throwing that lever around. That's great. Time. It's yeah. great. And I mean, lever guns in general are just sort of hot right now. You have totally. Marlin is back up and running with, with Ruger, uh, taking that over. And that's been a good thing. And, um, I mean, you talk to dealers and, and lever guns are just hot and selling, which is weird because is, yeah. then you have like super high end double stack, <laughs> 1911s that are $4,000 yep. that are just like li literally John wick type guns. And then like, those are fun, but then you have lever actions that also people are buying. It, it's such a dichotomy, such a split there. Um, and yeah, it's like the, you know, shoot 
a mile and a half, seven PRC, right. fastest spot for cartridge known to God or man, or it's here's this lever gun that's shooting bowling balls, right? And have fun. So it's it's fun to see. Um, I don't know if it's Yellowstone or just people, you know, being nostalgic or uh what, but um did you see that nine millimeter lever gun that I think it's is it POF USA? POF, yeah. That's right. Yeah, that's a cool gun, man. Very modern, very, I guess you'd call it tactical, maybe. I mean, it's it's called the Tombstone, and uh, it's it's all blacked out. It's, it's not a traditional lever gun setup. One of the biggest deals is it has a detachable magazine, like a stick mag. That's cool. Um, and people say, oh, it takes Glock mags or it takes Sig mags or no. No, it's their mag. Oh, and okay. the story okay. behind that is they developed a mag for a different gun, a, a, a PCC AR, because they're sort of an AR manufacturer. And they developed this mag and they have the tooling, the machinery to make all these mags like it or, or don't like it. But like, they're like, well, we already have like a mag manufacturing capability here. We're going to use our mags. That makes so, sense. And, and they're good and bags. I mean, I shot yeah. it. It ran fine. And and that's kind of a, I think, a hidden side of the industry that that maybe your listeners might not hear about or think about a lot. I mean, um, when we're developing a new cartridge or a new load, um, just a, a new style of ammo, or I'm sure the firearms folks the same way, you have to think about tooling and machining and lead times and what your supply chain can source, you know, and what you're True. able to get out the door and and as we all know, you know, it doesn't do me any good at Remington to announce a new load and not make any of it, right? So I right. think when we come up with new products like 360 Buck Hammer, uh, we're always thinking about, hey, how can we make sure we're getting this stuff out the door? That's a big deal. Yeah. Um, I'm, I've been shooting a lot of shotgun lately, and we're going to take a quick break. And after that, I want to dive into some shotgun talk. Summer is the season for shotgun shooting, breaking clays. Well, Remington Ammunition has a lot of different loads for your clay shooting. One of the ones I'm looking at is the STS. This is their premier STS. If you're going to get serious about it, they have the really nice stuff. There's a lot of pro shooters who use Remington Ammunition. And pretty much all the gauges and a lot of different types of loads. But we're talking about 20 gauge, sub gauges, and using lighter loads. So... A 7 eighths shot charge, 7 eighths ounce. Um, it's going to be less recoil, and you can shoot a lot of it without bruising up your shoulder. So check it out over at Remington.com. A new season of Guns and Gear has started showcasing the latest and greatest products in the firearms industry. We interview the inter industry experts about their products. We take the products out to the range for testing, for demonstration, We'll show them off. We'll see if something works, if they're showing us a particular feature that's interesting. And you can watch it right now on the Outdoor Channel, Wednesdays at 6 p.m. and 10 p.m. Eastern, as well as some other times during the week. Or go online and find it. The Guns and Gear Show, Season 15. How about that? Sig Sauer, one of the guns that they introduced recently in the last few years that's really cool is the P322. Semi-auto. 22 pistol from SIG. And one of the things I like about it is it feels like a regular SIG, a striker fired type pistol. It's not because a lot of 22 pistols have a totally different operating mechanism. This is more of a traditional slide, um, detachable magazine, and it has 21 one round capacity, which is a lot. It's optics ready. So if you want to put a red dot on it and be, make this kind of your practice gun, great for that. Suppressor ready, interchangeable trigger shoes if you want a flat one or a curved one, fiber optic sights, ambidextrous controls. It's feature packed and they've thought a lot of, about this. Sixhour.com is where you go to find out more about the P322. Silencer Central makes it easy to buy a silencer. They have their own brand, the Banish Series. They also have other silencers that they sell. But the secret sauce is you go on their website or you can even call them and they'll get you started on the process to buying a silencer and they make it pretty easy and painless. I recently shot the Banish 338. Yep, it's rated up to a 338 Lapua. Actually, uh, 338 Rum, which is even more power, more pressures. I was blown away. I honestly did not think it would be hearing safe. Shot it without muffs, and it was 
It was just quiet. It was just incredible. So that's one of the cool ones, but they do a lot of other, other stuff. And again, make it easy to buy a silencer. Go over to silencercentral.com to get started. So Joel, I, this is also the time of year for me. I'm not like a competitive shotgun guy, but there's pretty much, you know, we don't have a lot of hunting seasons going on right now. Um, and I just, I start thinking about, especially as soon as it hits August 1st, you start thinking about hunting season and yep. a little prep work. And one of the things I've got this, this lab that it's going to be his first season hunting. I've been oh. thinking about tuning up my shotgun abilities, shooting some more sporting clays. I even took a, a private lesson with a pro shooter, which sidebar, if you, if, if, if you've ever never done that, it's phenomenal. I don't know if you've ever taken like a wing shooting lesson, but most of us just go out and just spray and pray and kind of like, I don't know if I'm, am I behind it? Am I in front of it? But man, that's a game changer to, to take a lesson from a, a pro shooter. That's so smart. And just kind of like any pursuit, just being around somebody at that level, kind of seeing their setup and how they think about a target and their lead point, their break point. I mean, you can pick up a ton from those folks. Um, and you know, for what, a couple hundred bucks, maybe. Mm -hmm. right? Yeah. 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 So we did, um, we did, I think two hour private session and it was, um, gosh, Annabelle Ayers is her name. She's okay, yeah. national champion shooter that came through to the, the club I'm a member of. And I was like, heck yeah, dude, I brought a case of 12 gauge and she's like, you only brought a case. I'm like, <laughs> I, I thought that was a lot. I don't know. Yeah. And so we and ended up having actually burned through that in two hours and we brought more. I, mean, I went and bought more from the club. And, uh, but I mean, a couple of things like one was doing some sporting clays. I usually start from a low gun because I'm not trying to win a match. I'm just kind of practicing for, for hunting. And her take was, okay, I get it. You're not a competitive shooter, but go ahead and start from a mounted gun. And, yeah, we, we all know that you're most likely going to break more targets starting from a mounted gun. But also, she said, we're just going to take the mount out of this training session, okay? We're just, we're, we're mounted gun, you're ready. Now we're going to talk about where are you looking and gun movement and set it up for the, for the second shot and, and putting your gun in that place. But it's kind of a hold, we focus just a lot on hold point. Where are you holding? Where are you looking? Um, and I will say... The next week I went and shot clays and I didn't miss very much. I was just like, I, you were just tuned in. Go. Yeah. It's, it's amazing seeing folks at that caliber shoot. Um, you know, that, that gun barrel motion is very minimal right there. Yes. All about kind of knowing where they're going to start following the bird at following that clay pigeon and then where they're going to break that clay pigeon. And I'm, I'm not at that level, but for me, I'm just, I'm like, as long as I break it, right? I mean, I'm, I'm just trying to figure out where I want to shoot it, but they already know um, when you shoot sporting clays at that level where you want to, to knock down that, that bird. So I think there's a, there's a ton we can learn as hunters from, from folks on the higher end of that sport. Absolutely. Well, they think about it just like any competitive shooter, um, whatever your discipline is, they think about it and think about it into the minutia details. It's like, I, I remember um, talking to a competitive shooter came off the line and he hadn't missed. He, he'd broken everything so far. Wow. How's it going? He's like, ah, you know, like you're, you've broken everything so far <laughs> right, today. Right. He goes, but I'm breaking everything on the back half of the clay. I'm like, wow. That's just, amazing. You and I are thinking, well, it broke. Yeah, 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 exactly. Or, or half the time I look over to the guy I'm shooting with and I'm like, did I hit that? <laughs> did, you, <laughs> right. did you see what the thing went? <laughs> I th I'm pretty sure a piece came off, right? Yeah, like that counts. Um, <laughs> that's a big deal. And then the other thing you said, Ryan, that I want to tee on is you had to shoot more than a case, right? So, hey, I, I know I'm Remington Ammo guy and this is not self-serving. I promise you, you know, going out and shooting 25, 50 rounds a week, like you're not, you're not going to be ready. You know, you really mm -hmm. do need to go out and just shoot through some ammo and get better. And, and for me, I'm always tempted by going to buy that $10,000 shotgun or something really nice and fancy. But then I think, man, I bet if I just went and bought some ammo, I'd probably be a better shooter at the end of the day. I'm sorry, everybody. That is the secret. <laughs> you know, like, ammo. We all yeah. want to go buy the fancy gun and scope yeah. and this and that. Like, but if the gun, if the gun, if you're comfortable shooting it, it fits you and you shoot it pretty well, you probably should invest in more ammo and perhaps 
a little bit of training, some instruction? Just getting out and seeing different targets and going through a course and, and, you know, practicing that hold point, that break point and all that. I think you'll definitely be better on some, some mallards or some pheasants or whatever you go off and chase this fall. I don't want my dog staring at me after every group comes through going, dude, what the hell? Yeah. Yeah. I, you shot three I, times. Where are the birds? Yeah. I busted my butt all day and then you're here missing. <laughs> he's, he's just looking at the sky, just disappointed. <laughs> I know. I know the, the other tip I'd say for folks getting ready for, for uh hunting season with a shotgun, um, you'd be amazed how many people I talk to and they don't know where their, their hunting gun patterns, right? They don't oh, know yeah. where, where that load's going to actually go down range. So um, I feel like more folks are patterning their turkey guns these days, but mm-hmm. man, even, even your duck gun or your quail gun or whatever, man, get out and try it on some paper and, you know, shoot a few rounds and just see, Hey, does your gun, your load, you know, are you a little low to the left? Are you a little, are you right in the middle? You know, is your gun shoot a little high to the right? Cause even just that little small an adjustment, you'll kind of know where your pattern's going. Right. That's important. You're right. And I remember talking to Scott Carlson from Carlson's choke tubes Great guy. and he was talking about, I mean, he is a great guy and he is like the choke scientist. I mean, you talk to him and you go, I had no idea there was, I just thought it was a freaking tube that you guys He's drilled metal. some holes yeah. in or something. I mean, <laughs> dude, he is, he went off about patterning shotguns and he had, I mean, he shoots everything. I mean, he shoots all the guns and he, he, and he has, there's certain ones where he's like the chokes that come with that gun are, are not very good wow. and they don't pattern well. And it, and you were kind of saying like point of aim, point of impact, maybe it's, it's low or it's, it's right or left, but also, um, certain chokes give you a better consistent pattern. Um, totally. and then, and also you can change, sometimes you can change depending on the gun. If it is, if the pattern looks fine, but it's like, okay, it's really, it's really several, I mean, it's, it's 10 inches higher than the center of my pattern is 10 inches higher than where I was aiming. It may be gun fit and you can actually, a lot of even basic guns now come with shims to adjust the, the, the comb height or the cast on cast off and all those things that you can kind of play with Mm -hmm. and guys, now is the time to, to play with those things and fine tune it because it could be magic. You could be like a way better shooter come come season or or shooting matches if you do those things it's exactly right and you know you if your buddy went out to deer camp with you and and he's like well i've never shot this thing on paper don't know where it's going you'd look at him like he's crazy right so i right. think it, it's it's kind of the same with shotguns like you you need to take the thing out and kind of figure out where you're landing and and heck you know just just like with rifles and picking out a bullet and a grain weight some shotguns just like different loads. So mm-hmm. take out a couple of boxes and pattern and just see what your gun likes to shoot. So I'm looking on your website, remington.com. And obviously everybody knows Remington, Remington ammo. And you guys, I always kind of say you just make everything pretty much. Yep. Uh, when you think about shotgun loads and like target loads, I mean, some if somebody comes to you, Joel, you're the guy, you work at Remington, you know, I was going to go shoot a bunch of clays and you've got, nitro you've got sts you've got gun club i mean how does somebody kind of decipher all that yeah it's a good question so it's always for me hey what are you trying to go do you know are you going to just your weekly trap club um just pretty casual breaking some clays are you a high-end competitive skeet guy and that's all you think about every day um you know are you shooting you know, uh, more international trap bunker trap style. Right. So, so there's a lot on our website, Ryan, and on our catalog, but just know that no matter what kind of pers- competitive or fun kind of target shooting you like to do clay wise, we different loads kind of tuned for each of those. So, okay. Uh, you know, you think about, um, some of our products like nitro 27 nitro sporting clays, those are faster loads that are kind of designed, designed around that back fence trap that 27 yard line, right. When okay. you're off and you need that higher velocity load, you need that, you know, that kind of that lighter one ounce payload, um, to get out and do what you need to do. So I'd say it just depends on what you're trying to go out and shoot, but, uh, odds are we've, we've got something for you and, uh, Hey, if not, uh, right in, let us know what you need. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you guys are loading a bunch of stuff. Um, one of the things that, um, I'm kind of, been playing with lately is I have a 13 year old 
who she's she's a very good rifle shooter, and she's just because I think because she's a girl, she's just starting to get big enough, strong enough to do the shotgun shooting. You know, rifles, you're on a bipod or you're on a bench or whatever. You don't have to support the weight of the gun as much. But if you're standing there and you're trying to shoot um, moving targets, yeah. you need a little bit more upper body strength. And so she's finally getting there. And I've been playing with figuring out the sub gauge situation. And actually I've been enjoying shooting sub gauges. Um, let's take a quick break. And when we come back, I want to talk about sub gauges. Aftermarket upgrades usually make your experience better, whether you're upgrading your car stereo or new tires or customizing your experience with guns. And high-vis sights are one of those upgrades that can make a difference in your shooting, help you be a better shooter, and uh, whether it's shotgun, rifle, pistol, the LightWave H3 technology are tritium and light pipe sights, so it's 24-hour illumination. You have the night sight as we would typically call it but you also have the fiber optic that is very bright in the daytime and it's an upgrade that you can do to your gun pretty easy or you could just bring it to your uh your local gun dealer gunsmith and they can do it so go over to highvizsites.com and pick out your upgraded sights today ruger the ruger max 9 is might be your next handgun it is striker fired with a short, smooth trigger pull, clean break, positive reset, slim, lightweight, and compact for personal protection, concealed carry, while still providing 12 plus one rounds of nine millimeter. So it's kind of in that family of high capacity micro compact guns. Um, it's medium texture grip frame, comfortable grip, tritium, fiber optic, day night front sights, and uh, it's optics ready. Rugged construction, only weighs 18.4 ounces, less than an inch wide, easy to carry, and a pleasure to shoot. The Ruger Max 9, Ruger.com is where you go to learn more. RangeReadyStudios.com, we have a bunch of classes happening here at Gun Talk headquarters. The Range Ready section, it's on the other side of the building. We've got classroom, we've got a pro shop, we've got several outdoor ranges, and we're running classes. One of the ones that's really cool, there's still a few spots left, is the Hands to Guns with Max Michelle and Steve Tarani. This is October 13th through the 15th. Max Michelle, world champion pistol shooter, captain of Team Sig Sauer. He's going to get you spun up to shoot faster and more accurately with a pistol. And then we've got the scariest man on earth, <laughs> Steve Tarani, one of the scariest men on earth. Um, he will help you with hand-to-hand -hand combat, edged weapons, just a lot of good defensive-minded stuff that he can get you trained up on and give you more tools in your toolbox to protect yourself and your family. Go to rangeReadyStudios.com to learn more. When you go to the primary weapons website, primaryweapons.com, you see the typical home, shop, firearms, suppressors that they do. And then you have see this one little uh, button that says Canon Parts. And of course, I had to click on it. Canon Parts. Well, the Canon store are actually their cosmetic blems. Could have machining marks, pock marks, other small imperfections. Nothing that'll impact the functionality of the gun. But it may be lightly used for like testing and evaluation. They send it off to media guys like us to shoot a little bit. And they have deep discounts on a lot of cool things. Complete rifles and also uppers and lowers. I mean, I'm seeing 27% off, 15% off, 18% off, 20% off. Go over to primaryweapons.com and click the little button that says cannon parts. So Joel, sub gauges, I mean, probably the standard when it comes to shotgun, everybody thinks 12 gauge. 12 gauge is oh. great. No one thinks about 10 gauge. Shut up all you 10 gauge people. <laughs> no one's doing that. I like my shoulder too much. I'm not doing it. Yeah. <laughs> but, um, but so, so anything less, I guess I would, I kind of call anything less than a 12 gauge is a, is sub gauge. Um, even 16. Sure. And I'm, I'm kind of a little bit in the weirdo 16 gauge camp, but I've been shooting a lot of 20. My, my daughter, just to get them shooting a little bit. Yes, we did. Uh, start out with a 410 a few years back, a little youth 410. But let's be honest, everybody, 410 is not great for breaking targets or killing birds. So I'm. she actually got to sh try out a 28 gauge. 
Okay. And Joel, that's kind of magic. It, it really is. 28 gauge is increasingly popular. We're hearing from shooters and hunters around the country. You know, I know some shotgun manufacturers have come out with bigger chambers. So traditionally, um, most 28 gauges were two and three quarter inch. Mm -hmm. And now I think some folks are chambering three inch shells. So, wow. you know, before you might have to give up, especially on the hunting side, right? For a target load, two and three quarters all day, every day, you're good. Mm -hmm. On the hunting side, you know, you think about that might be a little light. If you're going after some big Canada geese or some, some pretty hefty mallards or whatever. So the fact that you can shoot a 28 gauge and a three inch shell, that's uh that's pretty magical. That is cool. Especially. Yeah. Like you said, beyond like the target shooting part of it. Um, I've, I've been shooting a 20 a bit lately and it's just pleasant. And when we talk about putting in the work and even if you're going to shoot a 12 gauge for hunting season, you can shoot cases of 20, 20 gauge and work on all of the aspects and mechanics of breaking targets. And then, you know, of course killing birds with a 20 and, and you save your shoulder a little bit, you sh yeah. save a little fatigue because with, with that coach, I was shooting 12 gauge and going through more than a case of 12 gauge in in a two hour session. By the end I was getting tired, but I had a, a 20 something year old uh, woman and I couldn't be a wuss. So <laughs> she's like, all right, load it up. Let's go. Let's go. I'm like, Oh, where's my shoulder pad? Uh, but, <laughs> but you're exactly right, Ryan. I think, you know, shooting a 20 gauge, a little easier on the shoulder. Um, I know shot shalamo has been hard to find and we work on that every day, but you can still find some 20 gauge around just like 12. Um, mm -hmm. and you know, I think a 20 gauge load, a little bit lighter, you can kind of see where your impact's at, right? You can see mm -hmm. where you're hitting. You can keep your your cheek on that stock, maybe a little bit easier. So I'm a 20 gauge fan. Um, 28 gauge you mentioned is ballistically very similar to a 20 gauge, um, but I think for me, I'd I'd probably pick the 20 or the 28 just based on finding some ammo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, ballistically, a lot of people say the 28 punches above its weight class. It's just mm -hmm. it, it does a lot of things a lot of things well. You said something there that was interesting, and I haven't given a lot of thought, but it makes complete sense. One of the things that long range rifle shooters have gotten to is they're less about like a super magnum high velocity flat shooting round because they can adjust for trajectory. Um, but even they're going to like six Creed more And one of the reasons people love it so much is because the recoil is so low that they are able to stay in the scope on the target after the shot and see their hits, see their misses, and adjust accordingly. You, you're mentioning like the sub gauge, you kind of have those properties too. Like it's yeah. not like simply a, a, a blast and a ball of smoke and your eyes close and you're like, what happened? Did I hit it? No, you're right. like, you're, right. your eyes are open, you're seeing the target, you're seeing like where you went. And shotguns, they're going slower, the velocity. You can almost sometimes get a whisper of like the cloud of shot, certainly the wad where you kind of get an idea of what you were doing and and why did you break it? That's important. And I think the ability to take a follow-up shot quickly and, and knowing where your pattern's at and knowing where you need to correct, um, you know, at that point, especially on wild game, I mean, it's kind of instinctual, right? You don't have a lot of time to think through an adjustment, but that being said, um, I think it's still a good chance to use that second shell in, in your magazine a little bit better. Um, if I'm being honest, anything after two shots for me with a shotgun, I'm just, I'm just angry. And I'm just pulling the trigger. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I, I totally agree. Especially <laughs> when you're hunting, that third shot is yep. either a hail Mary or a screw it. I'm just going to throw yeah, another yeah. one at him. <laughs> <laughs> now, They're gone. Yeah, I, I can see where it might come in handy. If you're, you know, big driven pheasant hunt, you got one bird just plowing down the line and you can have a little extra time great but but yeah i uh i shoot out of anger maybe a little more than i should <laughs> yeah. myself <laughs> it, yeah occasionally that third shot yeah a, a late flushing pheasant on a on a or a quail on a group or like if they're if they're really tucked in the trees ducks coming down into mm -hmm. flooded timber and you've got them where they're it's hard for them to climb out and and, and you got time to actually make that but or or cripples right cleaning yeah, up cripples sure. always a good thing on the water um assuming you do it right with dogs and whatnot. But, um, yeah, 
it's it's a funny thing that third shot is the hail mary a lot of times <laughs> it's still good to have the option um and, and not have that plug in if you're pheasant hunting or whatever but uh yeah not not always the best thing to do wasting ammo another thing shotgun wise and whether it's it's practicing or whether introducing a new shooter or a youth shooter is you can choose lighter loads so it's not just simply like going to, to a different gauge, but you go, well, let's do a one ounce load. Let's do a, a seven eighths load. And I mean, what's that going to do for people, Joel? Yeah, that, that makes a huge difference, Ryan. So, you know, especially um, that's why 20 gauge is one of my favorite to, to go out and shoot because you can load it a little heavier, you know, three inch shell, um, you know up to two ounces um, sometimes or better if you're doing a big magnum load um, or you can load it light, right? And have a nice one ounce softer recoiling load that you're still getting a good pattern um, and you're still getting that shot down range, but you're, you're able to kind of craft that load for you and for your hunting situation, right? I mean, you know, yep. that, that dove hunt, that teal hunt, that's not the same as that, that, you know, you mentioned some mallards in the flooded timber or, some wood ducks or, you know, a big Canada goose coming in. So I think, um, in my blind bag, I'm usually carrying a couple different kinds of shells kind of depending mm -hmm. on what hunting conditions are like, or, um, you know, definitely if you're going out with a buddy or an outfitter and it's a new area for you, just, just talk to them and say, Hey, you know, what, what kind of birds are you seeing? Um, what kind of distances am I going to have to make a shot? And then you can kind of tailor what you need for that specific situation. Absolutely. Yeah. And another thing, guys, just on, on all this shotgun talk, we talked about fit. It's a big deal for a shotgun. Your your eye is the rear sight. And so um, just a little trick, if you haven't messed with it before, I mean, if you have a shotgun that you shoot well, then you, maybe everything's cool. But if if you haven't tested this, mount the gun perfectly with your eyes closed and then open your eyes and see are you having to adjust to look down that top rib of the gun or is it perfect and if it's not perfect you may need to either perhaps adjust your mount but possibly you need to adjust the fit of the gun if possible very true and you know i think about dry firing practice at home you know sitting in your living room with a with an unloaded pistol of course and always check your firearms right make sure you're good to go but you know, sometimes I'll, I'll kind of dry fire with my shotgun. Right. And I'll just mm -hmm. practice a shoulder mount and a cheek fit, you know, 10, 20, 30 times to make sure that mounts consistent. Um, even, you know, if you've got a new shotgun or you're testing something new out again, making sure you're unloaded and safe at home and all that. Um, but just practicing your swing, you know, and kind of get used to that, that swing of that barrel to figure out where that thing likes to go and, and how you can best follow it. So I think there's some stuff you can do at home before you even get to the range that should make a good difference for you during your season. Yeah, you're right. We, we talk about dry fire a lot with pistols, but shotgun dry fire is really worthwhile, especially with wing shooting, practicing your mount. And I would say, you know, um, it's helpful if you can get some instruction. So you sort of uh, like know what you should be practicing and what a good mount mm -hmm. is. The other thing is practicing, you know, moving. And one of the things that you can do is if you're in a room and you have that line where the wall meets the ceiling, um, follow that line with the shotgun like you would fo follow the flight path of a bird. Another thing that I've heard of people doing is you stick a, a flashlight in the barrel of the gun. Again, oh, like Joel sure. said, let's make sure all the guns are very unloaded. Um, but stick a flashlight, like a mini mag or something like that, that fits down the barrel of the gun, turn on the flashlight and you can kind of see, am I actually pointing at that line and following that line of the bird or the clay or whatever it is. But I mean, even top instructors like a Gil Ash will tell you, yeah, dry fire at home. I mean, I can, I can greatly increase your hits on birds or, or clays simply by doing certain exercises at home. And also it's train your eyes because your eyes are such an important part of, of shooting moving targets, especially man, that's 85% of getting the job done. And this is maybe an exercise more for the range, but, um, you know, when you were talking about shooting that third shot, right, Ryan, I mean, when you have a, a full magazine, um, with three shells in it or more that weight differential, that's going to change your, your swing of that gun. Mm -hmm. Um, and, and maybe even your point of impact. So I think practicing with, with a couple of shells in your gun, and making sure you can handle that weight again, you know, make sure nothing's in the chamber, make sure you're at the range wherever you need to be safely. But 
practicing with with a fully loaded shotgun to to kind of get that swing right um and your consistency down again that's another good tip and something i should probably go do more to be honest yeah yeah very cool joel thanks for being on with us man thanks for having me as always it's good uh good talking shotguns and buck hair and all the above so thanks for having me always fun all right you guys pretty easy if you want to find out more go to remington.com thanks for listening and we'll see you next time on gun talk nation 